Uh, here we are with Chris Josephy, uh, aka Johnny Bax online. Um, how are you doing at the tournament yesterday? I was uh, I was really fortunate. I, I, I survived a very difficult table. I ended the day with 97,000 chips, which was way more than I, I would have been happy with. So uh, I had um, Alex Jacob to my left and Phil Helmuth two to my left, and then uh, a couple of people I didn't recognize, and then uh, Jim Worth and Eric Sagstrom. Um, so that was really hard. On my right was uh, Kenny Tran, Jim Bechtel, and Tim Fan. So it was a really, it was a really difficult table. And the two guys that I had not heard of, they both played well. So it was hard, but um, but I was fortunate. And I was fortunate that I never got dealt any good hands. And you know, I, I played a couple hands, and that that hit, and then uh, I got paid. I got I got paid a lot in the two hands. So that's really where all my equity came from. Yeah, I walked up there and I saw three of the top internet players all sitting together at the live table. It was pretty interesting. I'm sure you've had some battles against the crazy Canuck and Eric123 online. How is it different playing against them live? Um, I didn't play a hand with Canuck the entire day. I played one hand with him small where I raised his blind um, with Big Ace and I missed. And he flopped the flush draw. I bet at it. and. and he check called me, and then uh, the turn went check check. In the river, he actually had king eight suited and hit his eight on the river, and it was good. Um, it's not an issue with the commercial over there. Yeah, it's an infomercial. It's an infomercial, and and Eric, I, I played a big hand with him where I had aces, and I don't know what he was doing in the hand, but uh, I'm sure he, I'm sure he was thinking of something in his head. But what happened was. Uh, Canuck limped in early position, and Eric made it 800 at 1 2, no ante. And I looked down at one of my only five premiums of the day, which were two aces, and uh, I made it 2,500 in late position, and all folded back to uh, Eric, who called. And so there was like 5,500 in the pot, and uh, flop came king, queen, rag, and he checked, and I just checked behind him. And, Turn was another rag, and he bet 3,500, and I just called. So I wasn't interested in play, playing any big pots to be in the tournament. And, I mean, if he, he could have had me, and I really didn't know where he was at. And by this time, I thought that he probably had me on tens or jacks or something like that. If the river was a queen, he bet out 11,000, which was a very tough bet for me. Um, but I just figured that he had me on um, he had me on, on an under pair, and I would easily fold it. But I had the aces, and I made the call, and he had, like, 9-7 suited or something. But, I mean, he picked up a he picked up a flush draw on the river, which wasn't too good because they only deal yeah. five cards. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, he was he was unfortunate that he was making a move on me at a time where I had something, um, and then I got paid another pot. So I mean, that was the only real pot I played with him, and uh, I only played that one small pot with Canuck. So I didn't really play any big pots with anybody. I just you know all my stuff was pre flop in those two hands where I got paid. And that was really it. I just stayed out of everybody's way and just watched. It was kind of fun, and I had a good time at the table. There was a lot of talking going on. Right. And uh, how'd you come up with the name Johnny Bax? Um, back in my prior career, which was as a stock broker, I guess you can call it, I was coming up with investment ideas for hedge funds, and occasionally we would uh, we would grill managements on conference calls, myself and my partner. And uh, I did that one time, and uh, the next time that I called up using my real name, they cut me off. So my partner called up, used a fake name, Johnny Baxter. I got on with the name Johnny Baxter, asked questions again, and uh, and then just shortened it to Johnny Baxter and started playing poker. That's really the short story of it. And what got you into poker? Um, I saw I saw uh, on a flight, on a JetBlue flight down to Florida in December of '03 with my family. They were running some World Series coverage. I saw Chris Moneymaker stuff on TV. I, I said, "That well, that's cool." And then when I got down to Florida, I saw my dad playing on Poker Stars. So uh, I got up to Poker Stars. For like four months later, I've been playing parts on the internet. I always liked games. Um, and uh, so that I could play games for money and got on there and started winning pretty quickly. So it was good. And what do you think about the recent legislation making it more difficult in the United States to gamble online? Um, I don't really have an opinion on it. I mean, I'd like them to make it easier to gamble online. Uh, I'll just abide by the rules. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully they can find a way to regulate and tax it, and uh, that way everybody can be happy. Because I really don't, I really rather play online. I mean, I enjoy live, don't get me wrong, but I have a wife and three kids at home, so I can't play live as much as some of these other guys. And, uh, 
And obviously live won't be as good if the donkeys aren't playing anyway and that they come from online or whatever. They get interested in the game by playing online. So, um, you know, online is obviously good for the business and hopefully it sticks around. But, um, you know, I haven't, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. So. And what are, what are your main interests outside of poker? What is there outside of poker? <laughs> The, uh, that's a standard answer. Right now, you know, poker is, is my livelihood and also my hobby. I'm a pretty obsessed person. When I was in the stock market, you know, that's what I was doing also. And you know, I'd go home and I'd read 10Ks and 10Qs. And, and uh, although it may not sound like fun, you know, I guess business is my passion. And, and I, I enjoy this a lot right now. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm doing. I mean, outside of that, obviously, I really enjoy playing with my kids and spending time with my wife um, and uh, in, the, in the days off that I take. And so it's, it's all good. Who's the toughest players do you think that you've faced? Um, it's a good question. I, you know, I said it to him yesterday. Alex Jacob, I still haven't beaten a pot. I mean, I've played with him live three times that I can remember, um, and I don't believe that I've ever dragged a pot against him. He's he's really difficult. He's really good. Um, you know, there are a lot of guys that are that are really good. Um, he's just one that stands out in my mind. I guess everyone's gonna pick a big name pro when they. They answer that question, but he's a guy that I can't beat, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Alex Jacob. And is there someone that you seem to have their number or always get over on them? Can't take a pot from you. Well, when I said that to Alex yesterday, Kenny Tran said the same thing about me. He didn't beat me a single pot, but you know, I guess I guess that's what happens when you have position on somebody. You know, Kenny was on my right and I was on Alex's right, so it's just I guess it's easy that way. Uh, but th I think that was the first time that I remember playing with Kenny. Maybe I'd played with him in the past, but. Um, no, I don't. I don't think I have anybody's number per se. I mean, just and it's really just the. It's really the luck of the cards, I guess, because you know the good players are the good players, the bad players are the get bad players. And I don't think that certain people own certain other people, unless you pick up tells on them, which we're not talking about here. So, what characteristics do you think separate yourself from everyone else? You have a, you have like a, oh, I got to take a look. Oh yeah, you can actually look. No, 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 no. I, I have a camera like that. I thought uh, maybe because you're you're asking the questions so well that you were actually maybe you had them. Uh, a teleprompter. Yeah, yeah. I thought you might have had sure. them there. That's pretty good. No. Nah. Oh, I don't know what separates me from anyone else. I mean, I work really hard on my game. Um, I think it's important. As I said, with the stock business, it was the same thing. You know, you have you put in, you get out what you put in. Okay, so the more you put in, the more you get out. Um, so I work really, really hard. Um, I've got the, I've got decent math skills, which I think you need in the game, and I think you've got to be able to obsess. You know, you've got to really, really focus, and uh, I can do that. So. You know, I think I think those are the skills that are necessary in this game. I think. And I guess you really only got into this. It seems um, hardcore about three years ago. How is that? How has your life changed most dramatically since then? My my life is the same. You know, it's uh, it's it's the same. I mean, I'm not I'm not. It's the exact same. I mean, I do more traveling. That's really it. You know, I still have a, a profession that I enjoy. Um, you know, that I can make money at and uh, keep my family eating and clothed. And, Keep decent stuff in the house, so it's all it's all good. But it's fun and exciting, as opposed to the stock market, which was you know, which I started getting bored. So this is a, so it's a welcome change. But I, my my life certainly hasn't changed you know, dramatically. Do you think you'll get bored of poker also? Um, you know, right now uh, the the beauty of the game is that there are so many different ways to look at it, and you can look at it, uh, a hand so many different ways, and there are always different unique situations that come along, that keep you interested, that you can talk about with friends that, that play on your level um, and think on your level. So, you know, it's uh, it's exciting. But obviously, you know, things change over time. And, and of course, I can get bored with it. But right now, I love it. So. All right, well, good luck the rest of the way. All right, thank you very much.